Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another segment of The Last Word. I'm Dan Roberts, the publisher of The Vegas Voice, and our goal is to introduce you to all the people that are running for elected office. We are very lucky today to have a very special guest, and that is Kerry Cox, who is a candidate for Henderson City Council Ward 3. Kerry, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor and a privilege to be with you, Dan. You know, I... One of the things that I've been asking people, and I've asked you before when you were on, is why would you even run? I mean, you are a wonderful person, you're a mother, you have children. The idea of running for elected office, I always found fascinating. I love Henderson. I love its residents, businesses, and I really love our public safety and first responders, firefighters veterans, seniors, I just love everyone here and I just feel strongly that we need solid leadership, especially in the Ward 3 position and because we run at large, then that puts me in the position to be able to vote for all of um, the things that come in front of the city council and I just want to help make a difference, a big difference for our city. We have some big challenges and so I stepped up again to run and uh, I need to get this job done. So. So I can be on there. You know, and one of the things that I guess most people don't realize is that, well, really two factors. One is that you say you're running for Ward 3, but everybody in Henderson can vote. It's not just people who live in Ward 3. And I guess the other thing that I find fascinating is that the press and the public, they're more interested in the federal, the president, the senator, you uh, congressperson. Mm -hmm. But yet on the local level, city council, that's where most of the work is done. That's where most people have an input and have a concern about. I completely agree. And we do run at large, so everyone that is a registered voter in Henderson can vote well, for city councils. With that in mind, Carrie, what do you think the issues are that people are concerned about that they should vote for you? Well, I hear a lot of three things. And so the first one is crime. We are seeing a huge uptick in crime and residents are filling it and our public safety officers are filling it. So they're worried about the increase in uh, robbery, which has gone up 90, 90%, 91% oh, well, yeah. from um, t the comparison from 21 to 22. Um, the, first, the first seven months it was compared 2021 to the first seven months of 2022. We also have seen an uptick of burglaries at 88% and with cars um, breaking in, theft, all of that, 55%. So these are um, really interesting for us as a community that's used to just a very low crime rate. Mm -hmm. We can no longer say we're the second safest city. And the numbers are going to keep coming out and they're gonna be staggering, you're going to see, because we have so many issues with our um, with our loss of police officers. I think I talked about it possibly last time, but the three R's, retention, recruitment, and retirement, we have a huge amount of officers, third, a third that have um, sought retirement and have left, and then recruitment. We, um, although the recruiting departments, they're amazing, but you know, we just, they need more. They don't have enough people doing that, and I've been out actually recruiting officers, um, but you know, it's it's slow going. And even though we may get some coming out now out of an academy, you know, it's not enough. And we are losing our institutional knowledge. We're losing all of those officers that have been here forever that can help mentor and teach our new recruits. So that's the first thing I'm hearing um, is about the crime numbers and about how are we going to be able to get more police officers Fire, seeing some decreases in firefighters, and of course we have a shortage in paramedics. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing I hear a lot about is education. And as an educator, and the only educator in the class, I mean in the class, the only educator in the race right. um, that has real world classroom experience for 32 years is me. And so I really have always been working to help Henderson have its own school district. I've always felt like we needed to return to that. I mean, we did have our own back in 1946. I don't 
don't know that era if you know yeah. we, we did so and then the last thing is um, really economic recovery after having um, COVID and the damages that we lost so many businesses small business is vital to our community and having a diversified economy is important um, so they're concerned about those losses and now we have inflationary um, conditions and families are like what are we you know what are we going to do so that's that's a big deal i mean they're kind of almost they're looking at gas and groceries and they have adapted to that they have found other ways they maybe cut out um you know okay we're not going to have uh you're gonna have a meatless meal yeah, you know sure. twice a week or whatever so they've adapted but what they can't adapt to is their rent and their car payment and the insurance and those are the things that they're not adapting to because they're impossible to do that. So those are the concerns of our residents. But you know, I think there might be another one, Carrie, and I'm sure you know that, is that the fact is that Henderson has been building over the, year, over the years and people are saying, wait a minute, Lake Mead is disappearing and there's no water. Is, is that something that the Henderson City Council and yourself as a candidate can, can do something about or at least prepare the residents for it? Well, I definitely think we can be, and you know, and when um, I'm a city councilwoman, I think for me it's, a, it's your voice, you know, and taking action are the two things that you need to do. And so um, I'm already forming a water coalition, and I know there's some great ones out there already. Right. Um, I don't want to duplicate necessarily, but I do want to give the stakeholders and residents a place at the table to share concerns. I did meet with John Ensminger from the Southern Nevada Water Authority, and he took me through an hour and a half um, you know, PowerPoint, and we had a great discussion. I mean, the bottom line is our residents are going to be okay. We have enough water for our residents. Mm -hmm. It is the growth that is the concern, as you mentioned. And if we don't double down on our conservation efforts, which we've already been amazing here um, in Henderson and in Southern Nevada with conservation, and if we don't double down on those efforts, then there will not be any more building permits issued. And that was his exact statement mm -hmm. to me. And so because we need to grow maybe not at the breakneck speed we have been growing, although it's here and it's, and it's helped us in a lot of ways, sure. um, we need to really look at it and say, you know, how are we going to do growth moving forward? Because I don't want it to get to where it's all or nothing. Yeah. That doesn't help anyone. And then we lose a lot of people you out know, of our valley. Yeah. You know, and one of the questions that I've been asked is that, you might have some great ideas. You might have some great plans. You might want to go forward. However, you cannot say this is how it's going to be done because there are other members on the city council. I agree. And the question is, might be some compromise, some give and take, like everything else in life. Do you feel you can work with the other people, or is it my way or the highway? No, I am not a my way or the highway person, yeah. and anyone that knows me will tell you that. What I am is a roll up my sleeves, bring everybody together, sit down with the subject matter experts, bring in the stakeholders, bring in the leaders, and let's work this out. Let's find a solution. I'm very solution-oriented. There are solutions, and really strive for a win-win. It can't always be, you know, the residents have to just take it right. or the businesses have to take it. It has to be, we come together and really work, work the problem. There's solutions for everything. I really feel that. And working together is one of my, I think, one of my strong suits. I've been on a lot of boards. I'm on the Clark County Community Development Advisory Committee. I'm on the uh, Henderson's uh, Blue Ribbon uh, Excellence in Education and Youth Opportunity uh, Commission. So I've done, and I've been on boards and commissions for years and, right. and had differences of opinion. It's not about the differences of opinion that cause an issue. It's when we personalize it and we hold on to it as it has to be this way. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm opposite of that, So, but I do want solutions. I want an actionable plan for each thing that we're facing and let's get it done and stop talking about it. Okay. So now let me put you on the spot with the limited time that we have left. Okay. Seniors should vote for you because? Seniors should vote for me because I am your best candidate that's going to protect you in, um, in our growth. Everything we've talked about, I am going to help expand and, and get our officers, those, those spots that are empty filled. I'm going to make sure we get the needed fire stations and, and the needed uh, 
you know, police stations that we need, and, and like I said, the staff to fill them. Uh, I'm the only one out doing that. I'm the only one out doing everything that I'm talking about what's going to be done when I'm in. So that's rare when you have a candidate that's, that's not saying, okay, when I get in, I'll do A, B, and C. I've already been doing it for years, and I just want to continue to serve them. And, and seniors, I'm, I'm your best shot at continuing to have um, our uh, wonderful quality of life here. Things are changing. You don't, if you don't like the things that are changing, and you, you know, I'm it. I'm the one. All right. Well, in the few seconds that we have left, if people want more information about you, they want to contribute, they want to know more about your issues, they have a website, a phone number, how do they get a hold of you? They can go to votecarriecox.com. That's my website. They can also call me at 702-306-3302. I do give out my cell number. That's my personal cell number. I'd love to hear from them, um, hear from you out there. And um, also, um, I have an email, so votecarriecox at gmail.com. It'll do it. I thank you so much thank for you. taking the time to come out. I really appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck. And this is Dan Thanks. Roberts for The Last Word saying we'll see you again next time. Thank, Thank you, you, Katie. Thanks, Dan.